Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm going to continue to talk about dynamics. In my previous video, uh, part 1, we started talking about uh, the ground uh, rules and the ground, the basic of dynamics. And if you didn't watch that one, you should go and watch part 1 of dynamics. So we left off um, doing some exercises uh, for um, uh, even bow in piano, uh, which is called saint -Pilet. And we are going to continue to talk about how to play um, crescendo and diminuendo. Before that, I want to establish some ground um, rules about how to think about the dynamics. So when you think about crescendo, uh, you usually think loud. But loud is where you want to go. So basically, uh, you have to think the opposite. If you have, if you see crescendo in your notes, in your music, you need to start very, very soft because this is where you want to go. You want to go as loud as possible, but to, do, to achieve that, you have to start very, very soft. So, um, and the opposite, if you see diminuendo, um, you have to start the loudest you can, so you will have the opportunity to do a um, real diminuendo. So we start... Uh, your sounding point is very very important where you put your bow um, because this is going to establish your um, sound as well. So a little tip that I learned and that you probably know as well is uh, this contrary motion that um, you've probably seen many uh, famous violinists do uh, to help uh, the bow the carving of the string, like, um, so, um, so you move the opposite of your bow just to help the dynamics. Uh, so if you want to do crescendo from, uh, from the top, so it's helping your sound and also visually to achieve this um, drama in the music that we um, need to create as musicians. And to help me to have some structure of these exercises today, I'm going to use um, a material from a um, French composer and a violinist who uh, wrote some capriccio and uh, exercises for violin, uh, Pierre Rod. And the first exercise is um, only forte. Uh, and I'm going to put a metronome on 60 and then I will play um, G major. Of course, I'm going to put this PDF uh, in the description below so you can <clears throat> look at it when you're practicing.
<clears throat> and as I feel actually <clears throat> today that I didn't do such a good transitions um, between um, <clears throat> the frog and the top of my bow um, and I just realized it's very difficult to sustain the, the forte on uh, on that slow tempo so it's uh, really teaching me about um, my sounding point uh, how important it is to stay on the right place next exercise is pianissimo uh, I'm going to play four beats per bow actually uh, in the same tempo so 60 and um, uh, use the three points and uh, the one uh, is number one is your index and then we had the thumb and the little in the pinky I uh, also mentioned that in my previous video so when you do this dynamic it's so important to just just hold the ball like a, a feather and um, <laughs> also this core of the sound uh, okay next exercise uh, he's changing from uh, half notes to quarter and starts from forte and then going to piano um, let's see how that sounds by using the whole bow. Very difficult, uh, especially in piano, I think. Um, okay, let's try that one. He's having four notes in piano and four notes in forte. Um, so we start very, very our light down here. when you do this um, transition to uh, do it very sudden and um, do a good transition. I couldn't do that today, uh, so I definitely need more practice of this. Uh, so um, 
I haven't practiced all of these, of course, uh, all of the exercises, but some of them I did uh, for a long time ago. And I actually remember it's it really gave me um, some base, basic understanding of um, how I move my body, how I use my sounding point, and um, I, I managed somehow to combine it um, without uh, using so much uh, brain, like my hands knew what to do eventually. Uh, okay, then he goes on every note is changing from piano to forte. So he starts with uh, forte and then piano and it's giving um, oh, a lot of uh, sharps. So let's start with the second finger on C sharp. <laughs> motion. Uh, that helps me, uh, especially when I have to change uh, the dynamics very often. And what I found really interesting is when he starts to use dynamic on um, every note. Uh, of course it's in a very slow tempo, but um, he's using uh, crescendo and diminuendo. And it's on the um, fifth page. Uh, it's uh, line three. So it starts uh, and here is really very important uh, where you play um, on the if you're closer to the bridge, you produce uh, much more sound, of course. And if you're on the G string, um, it sounds in uh, sounds different. If uh, you're on the E string, uh, you have to move to the fingerboard. Scales and legato uh, with crescendo, and then uh, with diminuendo. So he has all of these uh, variations here uh, that you can use when you have. Uh, your music that you need to interpret and um, it's a really great uh, exercises choose maybe one page or even a couple of lines uh, per time and um, I really recommend to try it on because um, it's it's very helpful and it's it's building your um, musicianship even uh, and understanding of of your uh, own technique, how you use your body, how you, um, how much do, you, uh, how much pressure do you need, how where to play on the, um, your sounding point, uh, how is the weight of your arm, hand, uh, also teaching you not to um, crunch your uh, shoulder because that's very often we do when we do um, a bow, for example, in crescendo, we I do that. And um, in the long run, that's a uh, really great intention. Hopefully this was uh, interesting, uh, even so it's a very um, narrow subject. And uh, I hope you appreciate it. And please give me comments and give me uh, maybe a tip on what you want to hear next. So subscribe for my channel if you like it. Uh, give me thumbs up. And I will see you in my next video.